Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, we're talking about writing Ethereum smart contracts with the Solidity programming language. And I'm picking back up in a series on Solidity, and we're talking about writing functions inside of smart contracts and you know what you can do with them. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. I'm going to go ahead and pick up where we left off in the last video. I'm going to use this, you know, my contract that we built where we added a person, a uh, person struct to this mapping of people. Uh, so if you haven't seen that last video, go ahead and check that out. Uh, it's not necessary, but you can probably follow along with this video if you want to. What I'm going to do now is show you a little more about these modifiers, like public um, and things like that. I think we talked about that in the first video, but I'm going to go just a little further. So what I can do is, you know, show you another modifier, which is basically like internal. Um, so that's different from public. You know, public is a function that can be called, uh, you know, on the public interface of the smart contract. You can see, you know, the public functions listed here on the side. So I'll go ahead and create a private function or an internal function, excuse me, let's say function. Uh, we're just gonna take this people count and wrap it in its own function to show you how that works. We'll say uh, uh, increment count. We'll just make this a function and we can call it uh, internal. That's a different modifier. We'll just take this people count, and we'll paste it inside of here. All right, and we'll just say increment count, call that function, and we'll run it. See the smart contract, we'll add the person, we'll say dap, oops, dap university, and I'll click add person, and there we go. It incremented the count. You can see the people count has been changed. You can say Joe Blow. And the count's changed. So that's a way that you can, you know, use other functions that are going to be internal. And we can see this increment count function isn't uh, added to this list over here. It's not exposed to, you know, things outside of the smart contract. External callers can't use it. So, so that's an example of, you know, other, you know, types of visibility of functions in Solidity. Let's talk about function modifiers. So we can add, you know, more, you know, words and terms to the end of this function to change how it behaves. And I'll show you an example. So we're going to create our own custom modifier actually inside of this smart contract so that only certain people can call this add person function, all right? So what I'm going to do is basically, you know, make this smart contract uh, have an owner or like an admin. And we're going to say that only the owner can call this add person function and any other account connected to the network, you know, whenever they try to, you know, add a person, they won't be able to. And that'll show you how we can add an extra modifier to this function to make that happen. Basically, we'll just add a modifier that says that only the owner of this smart contract can do that. So first we need to, well, actually that'll just look like this. We'll say only owner. That's what the modifier will look like. Now, this only owner modifier doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and create it. All right, so we'll do that like this. First, we need to keep track of an owner. We'll say the owner is, um, you know, address. I'm not sure if we talked about this in the data types uh, video, but, you know, an address is a data type inside of Solidity. You know, like an address that's on the network, an account. So this will be the address. We're just going to declare it here. We're not going to set it just yet. Uh, we can set it like this. We can do it inside the constructor. Well, actually, nothing to do that just yet. Um, so that will be the owner. We basically just create a modifier like this. We say modifier. Say only owner. Let's look at function. And what we'll do inside of here is write the logic that makes sure that you know whoever's you know calling the smart contract is the owner. So that's what we're defining here: only owner and only owner. So how do we do that? How do we say the person who's calling this function is the owner of this smart contract? Well, we're going to compare it to this owner right here, but how do we know who's calling the function? Well, Solidity has a global keyword called uh, MSG, which basically stands for the function metadata that's passed in. And we're not actually going to pass in any metadata here. Uh, it's going to be implied. So basically, we have uh, access to msg.sender. And this is basically a special uh, you know, thing inside of Solidity that tells us the account, you know, this address, who called the function. And basically, 
we can just say, you know, is this person the owner? We can just, you know, compare equality of the person who's calling the function with this owner that we're going to store here in a second. All right. And if they're not, we actually want to throw an error. All right. So this is going to show you another concept in Solidity about error handling. So we can throw an error in Solidity, like, you know, I think earlier we had some errors happen, like here's an error. We actually want to trigger an error if this person, um, you know, is not the owner. We want, to we want to revert the transaction. And we can do that like this. We say require, um, sorry, msg.sender is equal to the owner. So basically anything inside of this require, um, if, if it evaluates to true, then this passes. If it evaluates to false, then this will throw an error. We basically are saying require that whatever you put inside of here is true, all right? And then after this, we can basically just do this, all right? And now our um, only, only own modifier is complete. So basically, now we have this modifier that's you know, defined here, and we add it here. And basically we say if the person who is you know, calling this function is the owner, uh, then you know we can actually run this function, and if they're not, we're going to you know create a failure. We're going to revert the transaction, and also whoever's doing this, you know whatever, uh, like this code won't run, so they won't pay this gas fee. All right, so now we need to set the owner, and I'm just going to do that inside of constructor. We'll use msg.sender as well. Say uh, function constructor, and we'll just. Open this curly braces and we'll say owner equals to msg, oh, sorry, msg.sender. Sorry, you don't need the function keyword here. And we also need to make this public. All right. So I'll save that. So whenever you deploy the smart contract, like, the, you know, this constructor gets run and the msg.sender is actually the account that deploys the smart contract. And they're going to get set to this owner state variable, right? It's address owner. And basically, that same you know address is the only person that's going to be able to call this add person function. All right, and if they, um, you know, they, this code will run and we'll be able to add a person. And if we switch accounts to some other account over here, then it won't work. So let's just try that. I deploy this. We will uh, you know deploy with this account. So let's change to that account. And we'll add the person. Actually, I don't know if it deployed that account or not. Let's try it again. So make sure on the first account, we'll deploy. All right. We'll add a person. We'll say DAP University. We'll add the person. All right, let's see here. All right, it worked. The people count is one. Now we'll say, you know, Joe Blow, and we'll change accounts to this one. And we'll try to call it again. We'll add a person. And we see it has failed, and the people count has not changed at all. So it worked. So we've kept track of the owner, and we say only the owner can do it. Now while we're here, I'm going to show you a little code formatting that I like to do sometimes. This is getting kind of long, and sometimes, you know, if you're like me and you have a text editor with a whole bunch of panes open, uh, I like to keep my columns kind of short sometimes, especially with Solidity. And it kind of makes it easier to maintain these functions when the arguments are getting long and you're using git and things like that. Sometimes I will just break these up like this. All right, and then I'll actually put the modifiers. If you have a bunch of modifiers, sometimes this makes it easier to read. And also when I'm writing my own Solidity source code, I only use two spaces, I don't use four. Uh, but yeah, that's sometimes how I'll break these functions up so I can see the function name and then the arguments um, then I can see the modifiers, and then I can actually see the code that gets executed inside here. And it can make your smart contract kind of long, but it can be, sometimes this will catch you. <laughs> if you have too many, you know, if you have three visibility and modifiers on here, sometimes it can be kind of tricky. So I like doing this. All right, so next, I'm gonna show you how to work with time in Solidity, okay? So what we can do is basically compare time in Solidity and instead of um, this saying only owner can do this, let's say that you can only call this function if a certain time has passed. So let's pretend like, you know, this is uh, a contract that is only open at a certain time. So we'll say instead of only owner, we'll say only while open, only while open. All right, and this opening 
uh, state is going to be determined by a time. So once we've passed a certain time in history in the future, then we'll let you call this function. If it's before that, we won't do it. So that's really useful if like you're building a crowd sale or something like that that has an opening time, like you know, ICO, smart contract, and you say, hey, we can only let you contribute Ether like after, you know, the first of the month. Well, you just figure out what time that is and say, hey, you know, if you make a contribution before then, we'll throw an error. So I'll say only while open, all right? And instead of requiring that uh, MSG, that sender is the owner, right? We're actually gonna just take this out. We're gonna say, uh, we're gonna make sure that the current time is uh, in the future, like beyond a certain like uh, opening time. So let's do uh, uint two fifty six opening time. All right. So how do we do this? Well, we need to set this opening time somehow. All right. So the opening time is actually expressed in seconds, in, you know, inside Solidity, or these you know, time, time stamps are expressed in seconds inside Solidity. And, you know, seconds of what? Well, it's, it's epic time, which if you're not familiar with that, it's um, a concept in computer science that's like the epic is a, is, a, is a specific time. I can't remember the actual date. It's like a date in the 60s or 70s or something like that. Um, and basically we just add seconds since that point in time in history. So this is the current epic timestamp is this many seconds uh, since the epic time. And I guess you, there's probably a link here where you can read more about that. Yeah, the Unix epic clock. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can get on Wikipedia and figure all that out, but basically uh, this is the current epic time and it's changing. So we use these seconds values. So this is like the current, you know, epic timestamp. We'll say this. All right, so this is how we could set this. And it's, you know, UNT256 is going to store this big number of, of seconds since that timestamp. And that's going to be our opening time. And so how do we compare that to now? So how do you get now in Solidity? Well, there's no perfect way to do it, but the best way is to get the current block's timestamp. All right, so how do we do that? Well, just like MSG, there's a global uh, variable in, in Solidity uh, called block dot and we can say block.timestamp, all right? And we can say, is the block.timestamp, uh, is it greater than or equal to uh, the opening time? All right? So basically, if it's after the opening time, we're gonna let you call this function. And if it's not, um, then we won't. All right, so let's give this a try. Uh, I'm going to update this timestamp. Let's refresh it. Let's see. This is the current one. I'll paste this in here. Uh, so 15. I'm going to add 60 seconds, so a minute. Um, so I'm going to deploy this, and it will be... Uh, it shouldn't work right now, so we can try to call add person. Uh, I'll try to add dap university. Okay, we'll add person. And we'll see that it reverted. Okay. And now we can check the timestamp. We're not there yet. So I'll just pause the video and wait for this to pass 75. I think that's the actual time. Yeah, 75. All right. I'll pause the video. I'll pause the video, giving us plenty of time. We're past the timestamp. You can see it's 793 and we're at uh, 775. So let's deploy it again. Well, actually, let's not deploy it again. Let's just do Joe uh, Blow, add a person. And it worked. So. That's how you can use um, time and solidity. You can get the current time and set a time value with seconds. And so that's what I'm going to call today, guys. I uh, hope you all like this video. Let me know how you're enjoying these uh, solidity videos. Let me know if I've missed anything or if there's something you want to learn or if you're just not liking them. That's okay, too. Just let me know down in the comment section below. And also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And click the like button down below because that really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. And it also helps keep, keep me making these videos for you all. All right. Until next time. Thanks for watching DAP University.